Right. As I mentioned, okay, the cuckoo box, cuckoo sandbox is an open source and it analyzes a P5 format, PDF, and Microsoft like it's either in a Word, uh, PowerPoint, Excel file. It, it does analyze those. And not only that, PHP script. Okay, actually I would only use uh, with the uh, P5 format, but uh, it says it analyzes uh, other files format as well. And it generates JSON format. Have you seen the JSON I guess, data format? It's just a, it's just a string. And it looks, I mean, that doesn't look like the HTML, but I will see it. Uh, what, what, when we actually see it, uh, I will point it to the JSON format. And it generates HTML and the MIME format as well. Right? How about this? I'm not going into detail, but the point is you can customize this cuckoo box because it is open source, so you can modify the uh, sandbox itself. So for this one, this lab, now we will use multiple uh, windows, so please, uh, I will go very slow. So everyone can have a, you know, exactly the same windows as I have here. Right. Let's uh, please close everything, every window that you have open. Because now we want to even count the windows, you know, which one you need to work on. Please close everything and have only virtual box manager ready. Now I assume you have a very clean window. And And let's start. All right, now you have a clean window here. And now let's start on the, please open one terminal. Do not type this one. For you, there is a left side, there should be a terminal, right? Opening terminal. So oh, please open new terminal. Do not type this one like this. But just please open one terminal. So you have this one terminal ready, all right? Here we will run inetsim. Sudo inetsim. Now do you have inetsim running? Yes. All right. And on the second terminal, please open new terminal. Okay, you don't need to type this one for you. Left side, new terminal. Now, do you have the second terminal? And also, how about this? In order to have uh, more, I'm sure you have much bigger screen than I have right now. Because <coughs> yeah, but anyway, I will just have a so I let them uh, window. And now from here, I will run Cuckoo Sandbox for the 1.0. And I will change the directory to malware class, tools, and Cuckoo. Please change the directory to malware class, tools, Cuckoo. You have that? All right. Actually, I missed one, just one step. But can you then now highlight the uh, virtual box manager? Do you have the virtual box manager on it? So please highlight Cuckoo. Do not run it. Just highlight it and click right click and restore snapshot. And say, are you sure you want to restore Snapchat Cuckoo? Say restore. Do you have that? Right? So this one should be uh, at the Cuckoo uh, Snapchat, the victim VM. 
So I, I have a, a case that you know you you when you cannot see from the right click and re restore snapshot uh, option here, then it's most likely that you uh, that's because your victim VM is running. So please make sure you close the victim VM. All right. So now we okay here. Now we have a, a victim VM at the cuckoo box, a cuckoo snapshot, and I have a NSM running. And on here, I am at the tools cuckoo directory, right? And now let's start cuckoo box. Sorry, before that, I need to edit one uh, one configuration file. A file is because I, I put, when I set up this lab program, I missed one. Uh, all right, sorry about this one. G edit. I'll put it a little bit just for now for you. G edit. No, you don't need to uh, maps, uh, change the uh, window size, but G edit and conf and auxiliary that conf. G edit conf and enter. You see that? Here are the uh, auxiliary that come by open. Then please change this interface to VBox1. Right? Interface VBox net one. There's a one here. Right? And save. Here. And close. Right, you got that? I was that done. All right, all right. Thank you. So then let's leave it here now. What I'm gonna do is now actually starting the uh, cuckoo box. When you uh, look at the directory, you will see there is a cuckoo.py and left cuckoo.py, right? Then a uh, type. Python and that slash and cuckoo dot pi. You see that? And enter. Then you will see these uh, messages here. Who who has this uh, cuckoo box running? All right, all right, all right. We have a cuckoo box running here, so then I will leave it here. Now, please open new terminal, another one. So, use the uh, uh, the icon. I will just open another terminal. Another terminal here. And go to one, two, three. Go to the malware and tools, cuckoo, util. Right? I am at the tools, malware class tools, cuckoo, util. Right? I will just uh, same, same, uh, same directory. All right. Then we will now actually submit the uh, uh, sample to the cuckoo sandbox. Python. So let me do this one. When you do ls, there is a submit the pi. Python and then submit the pi. Now I will give the uh, actual sample path. So please make sure you use the tab composition so you will not have any typo. I was giving the this tilde and malware class sample and poison IV and PI agent.exe. Or please make the tab composition.
You have been. And enter. Then you will see the uh, success. It has been, uh, the sample has been submitted to the uh, Cuckoo box. Then the Cuckoo send box will basically launch the VM, submit it automatically, and do the whole analysis, and then you want to generate the report. Who, who don't see the, uh, this Windows popped up, the Beacon VM by, so and then just leave it as it is, so you're going to just run the analysis. Okay, so once the uh, VM uh, disappeared, then let please go to the uh, terminal that you just run the utils. The uh, util is submit the Python. Then please change the directory to I'll just go this way. To malware class tools. Cuckoo. There's a storage. So. Right. So once you uh, and once the VM disappears, then please uh, use the uh, terminal that you just uh, use to submit the sample and then change the terminal to the storage. Right. So cuckoo storage. Right. And when you see the storage, you will see the uh, analysis and binary directory. Right. Binary directory is the one that stores the, all the samples you submitted. So go to the analysis, that's where the all the reports and the raw data are located. Right? How about this? I'm gonna uh, increase this one. Okay. Go to malware tools, cookbook storage analysis. Right? For you, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be the ID tool. Because I actually submitted one sample, you know, to set up the uh, this lab. All right. So what we are doing is, please use the uh, windows that you just used to uh, submit a uh, sample. Which one is at the third terminal here? Right. From by using this third terminal that you have prompt, please change the directory to malware class and tools, cuckoo, and storage. All right, please change the directory to storage. All right, then from here, so please change the uh, directory to storage, All right? And change it to change directory again to analysis. Everything good? And when you, uh, to LS, there is a one and two. And we just submitted uh, the sample and then it identifies a tool, which info, whose information is, hold on a second. Do you see, when you see a little bit up here, when once you submit the sample, it will give you the ID, right? So you will know which ID you need to look at in order to see the result, right? So the current one is ID two. So let's change the directory to analysis and tool. Do you, are you at this uh, directory? All right. And let's see LS. You see analysis dialog and binary and dump files, logs, reports, and charts. So I will explain this. I think files, it has all the files that it has been created. You don't need to change it for now. It, it, this, this is the one that you grab the uh, uh, file that uh, created. And do you remember the PI driver.exe that was, has been created underneath the uh, systems alternate data stream, right? It actually grabs those. Please do not change your directory. We, I'm just, uh, you can just look at the screen because this that's not the focus right now. The focus is in the reports directory under analysis and tool and reports. All right? Uh, did you change your directory to reports? 
And please uh, show me your hand that you, when you can see report.html, report.json, and report.xml file. Okay, I see one. Uh, how about you see this uh, file when you do, do ls? So change the directory with the cd and to this directory. Google stories analysis to report. Good. All right. Yeah, it's a kind of a uh, very tough directory. It's very deep. Oh, can you want oh, CD and Kondo? I'm so sorry about that. Uh, data. CD data. Uh, this way. And CD and space data. Space data. Yes. So you want to change the parent and do LS, please. All right now, let's move to CD reports. Okay, all right. And if you do LS, now do you see the uh, reports, right? So, no problem. So, there is like a you know, raw data, and then there is also more well formed reports. So, for now, we will focus on the reports. So, here. So now you have all these reports, right? And let's see. So we are going to focus on this reports directory and all the reports being generated, right? And how about this at the uh, page eight? So at page eight, this is the way you can open those reports. Right? And you do here, ls, I have exactly three types of reports and at the page eight. So in order to open report.html, is a uh, HTML file, so you can use a Firefox. Uh -oh, uh, sorry, you should be ampersand if you're going to open the uh, GUI. You see the uh, cuckoo box result, right? Okay, for me, I will not screw it up because this is uh, uh, forwarding this, uh, is takes uh, for a while. So I will not uh, keep scrolling. How about the next one? Next one is a JSON file, right? We can just use the uh, text editor for that. So let's open it with gedit. JSON. The reason, uh, actually, JSON file itself it is not for the human. It is more for the automatic system to digest, right? As you can see, it is, it is not actually that you know human, you know, uh, user friendly kind of looking, right? So if you, when you compare with the HTML. And but just uh, so far, still JSON, this file format has more detailed information and which is still readable, All right? So, just there's that, and let's go back. Now, I have too many uh files open, so let's see if I can get back to the previous one. Um, right. All right. Here, but you have much bigger screen, right? So you can uh, use the uh, term other terminal. So from the same terminal, let we are actually keep using the, uh, the third terminal because INSM and the Cocoa Box is still running. And here, let's use Firefox to open the mic uh, result. Firefox. You probably need to uh, actually type till mic. Okay, it is because the XML is not the uh, Firefox default file format. You may need to actually type entirely here. Report that mic 4.0.1 for XML. I have M percent.
Do you see that? No. Oh, you don't see this one? No. All right. So this is the XML file. And, uh, and okay, this is going to be slow. So what, if you don't see this one, just let me know. All right. So, so cook, uh, the reason I use the uh, poison ivy to run the cuckoo box is just to make sure you can submit the uh, sample to the cuckoo box, right? So, <clears throat> and make sure when you have sample and uh, result, the report, the for now by default actually cuckoo box uh, generate report HTML and report JSON file and. But if you like, change the configuration file, then it also uh, generate the uh, mic format report, right? So let's let's see here again. And one th and one thing is here did I just mention that the uh, oh I probably okay this report that is HTML is HTML a file format, so you can open with the Firefox and. Also, the report that might this might format is an XML file, so you can open it with the uh, Firefox, right? On the other hand, report that JSON is a text format, so you can, you can use any you know a text editor in order to open uh, the uh, JSON report, right? So I'll leave it here, and since I just copy that one on my local machine because it's really hard for me to just uh, show you on the my Ubuntu machine is gonna be very slow, so. Let me just show you. Let's see. And it's going to be new one. But this one should not work. Uh, let me just quick change something here. So we don't need to open it soon again. All right. All right. So now I will <coughs> show you the, um, uh, let's say, HTML. Uh, Format first. We're not gonna analyze it. We'll just look around quickly, and then we will use one of the sample that I prepared. Beware, restricted, activates, control, block. Yeah, allow block the. Uh, no, I don't think there is an activate. Maybe there is a something. So all right, you may try to contact the outside. I'm not clear on that. This one probably will be here. Anyway, so when you see here, do you see the file name and then MD5, the uh, uh, Cocoa Box give you as a result, and it uh, shows you a snap, uh, screenshot, right? So this is a one of uh, good actually uh, resource to ha uh, report to have. So if malware maybe you know some pops or something, or well, sometimes. It may, you know, waiting for the you know, user some interaction. So by just looking at the screenshot, it's actually very good. So good to see. So if malware does not generate anything, but it turns out to be, you know, malware is waiting for maybe, you know, some GUI input. Right here. Let's see. Okay, this is quite long. Okay, this screenshot was just long, but when you, for you, you it just shows show you as a very small, like, you know, thumbprint kind of type, right? It's not that it's, uh, big, right? So when later on when you uh, have this result again, please focus on the I guess dropped files or the uh, network analysis. There should be uh, some registry key changes later on, okay? And also when you see the process is uh, uh, result, you can click. Is there a lot of content? Okay, hold on a second. I'm going to get JavaScript here. Then you should be able to see when you click individual this process, then you will see all the uh, API calls here. 